Grant Cardone, everybody. Woo, get on your feet. Good to have you. Oh, uh, wow. Thank you so much. So nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Shit, I'm on vacation. I came here just to, you know, just to have a good time and drink and go out on yachts, watch the whales, smooch with my wife. So it's so nice to be here in a room of uh, super excited people. And, you know, there's not enough of this on this planet where people are gathering together for the to, not to argue and fight and, and debate, but to, uh, to build something great. And I heard about Glenn. By the way, this guy is a genius, okay? I, how did she say it? How did she say that? He's a genius. I don't care if he's a genius. I'm like, I care that he's a genius. <laughs> so... Um, you know, uh, I heard about EXP about a year ago from, maybe a year and a half ago from um, um, Lisa Copeland. She's like, you got to meet this guy, Glenn Sanford. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear this every day. You got to meet this guy, and you got to meet that guy, and you got to meet this person. And so uh, about a year later, uh, Glenn, I saw Glenn pop into a clubhouse. Any of you on clubhouse? Oh, man, clubhouses. You know, it's either the clubhouse or the trap house. But... <laughs> But Clubhouse is an app like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube. These things that many of you are too old to understand. <laughs> you are. You, you're, like, you're like, I ain't got time for that shit. I'm watching a game. I don't have time for that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm running my business into the ground. Because <laughs> I'm not doing anything right now except complaining. So the first time I saw social media was about 12 years ago. And I was in Los Angeles, California. It was 2010. Uh, I, the economy had just collapsed. How many of you got crushed from that little global slap spanking? Yeah. Well, when I, got, when I get spanked, I learn. Okay? Because I'm not taking the same spanking twice. It just will not happen. And when 2008 happened, Lehman collapsed. We were living in Los Angeles. A beautiful home there that we had bought, and we had, we had the life made. I had three companies. Two of them were doing pretty well. The third one was we were dumping money into real estate. And when 2008 happened, I, wa I remember watching TV in, my, in, my, uh, in our living room, and Elena saw my face go white. white. The, the guy from Lehman, the, the, the couple from Lehman are walking out with their boxes, and I'm like, oh, my God, the world just came to an end. And Elena's like, what's going on? She, she could see that something as, as, as the person that was taking care of my family and my household, and my mission in life is to take care of my family and my household. That is my mission. Like everybody's wondering, what's my why? Take care of your damn family. How about, how about before you save the world, save your ass? You know what I'm saying? And, and your mama and your daddy and your wife and your kids, why don't you just take care of everybody before you take care of the whales? Because fuck, you got your hands full with your own life. I can't even manage 1,400 square feet. I'm going to save the ocean. <laughs> so, so uh, you guys with me? Okay. So, so, uh, so my wife's like, what's going on? I said, we're going to die. And she's like, I ain't going to die. She's like, you didn't get me into this telling me you were going we to die together. She's like, you need to figure this out. This is exactly what she said. Give her a big hand right now. That's what a good woman will do. We're from Louisiana, basically, okay? So when your wife from Louisiana, when they say, hey, figure it out, that means get your ass to work. Get back in there and figure out whatever the hell. Now, I got to bring you back a few years because before this, I was hunting her down. What, what do y'all call that? Recruiting. <laughs> so I'm recruiting her. I met her in Los Angeles. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to get a listing. <laughs> You know, I want to be on the market. I don't want this to be on the market too long. <laughs> okay, there's a shortage of this kind of inventory. <laughs> Am I talking real estate talk right now? Okay, you guys understand this talk. Okay, I'm like, I'm willing to pay a broker fee. <laughs> Shit, uh, and, and I'm willing to take out a loan for this. Right? I don't, I, I, 30 years, I couldn't think with 30 years, I was thinking about a weekend. All right? <laughs> Short term loan, but she was beautiful. I'm like, that's going to be her. That's going to be my wife. And I went and met her. And I said, my name's Grant Cardone. And she just like, 
How many, how many single people in the room? Say, say 10x if you're single. Have you ever met somebody and you're like, man, that's the person, and they just look at you like you're Casper the ghost? <laughs> she looked right through me like I wasn't even there. Okay, and I got her phone number from the guy that she was working with. And I said, I need her number. Mitch is like, can't give you her number, man. It's against the rules. I said, Mitch, you're going to give me the number. <laughs> the question is not whether you're going to give me the number. The question is when you're going to give me the number or where you're going to leave the number. Or you could leave the number and drop the number right there. It could go right here, right? But you're going to do it, Mitch, because I'm just going to stay with you like a little kid. How many of you got kids? <laughs> Mitch, I'm four years old. Give me the fucking number. Okay, I'm gonna tear the damn trailer apart. He's like, here's the number. Okay, so 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 she he gives me the number. I call her 26 times over the next 13 week, uh, 13 months. 26 times without a return phone call. And this is what the gentleman was talking about. You got to commit first. When you know something's right, folks, commit, commit, go all in on the deal. Nobody knows what you're what you're up to. Nobody knows what's going on inside me. I called my mom that night and I said, I met my wife today. And she's like, well, have y'all been out? Where did y'all go? What did you do? I said, no, she hates me. <laughs> and she's like, she hates you. Grant, it takes two. And this is what I knew from being in business. And if you're taking notes, it might be worthwhile. It does not take two to tango. It does not take two to make a marriage. And it does not take a buyer and a seller. What it takes is you. It needs to be you first. You have to decide they're selling the house, and you got to decide that they're buying the house before any house makes a transaction. I had to decide that she was going to be the girl before she could see that I was going to be the guy. You guys with me? All right? 26 phone calls. All of them were like, hey, how you doing? You know, I didn't mention that she never calls me back. I didn't mention that she was breaking my heart every time she didn't call me. I didn't mention the fact that her best friend said I was too short. Okay, You guys know what all your objections are, don't you? Like her, her a friend said, you're too short. I said, just tell me what the real deal is. I got to know what the objection is. I cannot handle the unspoken objection. What is the real deal? Grant, you're too short. I said, okay, what else? What else you got? Uh, you're not a Hollywood guy. She, she's, she's an actress. I wasn't in Hollywood. I'm not an actor. Okay, good. What else? You're a businessman. She thinks you're too conservative. Okay, what else? What else you got? Well, you don't have a prison record. You don't have a prison record, no tattoos. She liked bad boys, okay? How many ladies here like the bad boys? Just be honest, okay? Be honest. The lady over here is like, yes, I love them, okay? So, so I just continue to pursue her because like somebody said earlier, sometimes people change. How many of you in the room have changed? How many of you in the room have changed? Exactly, you're going to keep changing too. Some of you you're not going to like. So, so. I pursued her until one day, because I know this, okay, and you might want to keep this in your collection of how you handle uh, discouragement along the way. When you get a no, would you agree that no is a version of yes? <laughs> how many would agree with that? Dude, look, I mean, think about it. What's the opposite of yes? What's the opposite of no? What's in between? Maybe. So I always tell people when they tell me no, I'm like, don't say no, say maybe. Okay, just say maybe. No, well, maybe, Grant, maybe, but not right now. Excellent, because I know no's can turn into yeses. I've said no to a lot of things in life and then done them. You've walked into a casino before. I am not gambling tonight. I will not gamble. You came down to Cabo. I am not drinking while I'm here. Okay, you, some of you came down, no enriched bread while I'm here, no chips, no guacamole, nothing, okay? And as soon as you got down here, you're just like freaking hitting shots, <laughs> eating guacamole, slamming it in your face, right? So how do you get from no to yes? Just show up in Cabo. <laughs> it's a maybe, right? How do you get somebody to say, go, go from not selling their house to yes, I will? Get to a maybe and then follow them up, okay? Look, I've never, I'm, I'm not a real estate agent. My wife is a real estate agent. She is now a licensed state of Florida real estate agent. 30 days, okay? I get involved with Glenn. Uh, Glenn's on a clubhouse, back to my clubhouse story, okay? And so Glenn, I see Glenn pop up on clubhouse and I'm like, I, I bring him into this little room. It's a little app for you, you, you older people. It's an app. 
Okay, it's what your kids are using right now. And I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing but gold and possibility on these apps if you know how to use them. And one thing, I don't, I don't have a lot of time here with you today. I wish I had more time. I wish I had days with you because, there, huh? Come on, man. Make the time. I like that. Um, and I appreciate, I appreciate uh, you guys thinking enough of me to have me here. Brent, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate what you've built here. And just to be clear, I am not being paid to be here today, okay? Okay, I just want everybody to know the IRS, if they're watching, because this is on video, okay? And I hate these people. How many of you hate the IRS? You should hate them, okay? We got that in common. I hate these people, okay? I got something for you right there, okay? Because I am a highly productive human being. I'm an extremely productive human being. And I tell you, nobody cares about your story until you produce something at levels to where they're like, how did you do that? This should be on your bucket list for everybody here. You're on your bucket list. Your production should be at levels where people are like, tell me your story. Because if they don't care, it's because you haven't produced enough to get bright enough. Okay? Most of you in the room are just producing what you think is sufficient for you and your family. Okay? Is it all right if I challenge you a little bit over the next 20 minutes? Can I challenge you? Say, say 10x if I can challenge you. So I don't want anybody leaving here bitching, moaning, and groaning that I came off too hard on you, okay? You guys with that? No criticizing, no complaining, nothing. You got it? Because sometimes people complain about me. They're like, the guy's too hard. He's too focused on the money game. Y'all need to watch Plant the Planet on Netflix, okay? You, when you leave here, you need to get your team on a steady diet of the planet on Netflix, okay? And you're going to see how animals live every day. Okay, in that environment, if you don't go out and get something and bring it home, your babies don't get fed. Many of you in the room are making targets based on what you need, not what the whole community needs. The, the, how many of you read the 10X rule? Anybody here? Oh, man, y'all got to read that book, okay? You got to read the 10X rule. Nobody here read it. Yeah, yeah, I saw it in the bookstore and kept walking. You got one right there, ma'am? That's excellent. Can you bring it up right here? Let me sign it for you real quick, all right? You got, you got a pen? That's why I brought it. Yeah, I that's awesome. Gonna yeah, yeah, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign it right now. Okay. Jessica. Yeah. You guys should get this book. This book, thank you. Thank you very much. This, this book, that'll be 500 bucks. Uh, th this book, this book, uh, this book is about how I got out of 2008. Because how I got out of 2008 was, was, was not as important as how I got into it. If you got spanked before, it's because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time with too little, okay? If you've ever approached bankruptcy, the broker that, that the, the gentleman was talking about that went bankrupt, it's because he didn't get big enough, okay? You cannot fail when you get bigger and bigger. You have to keep scaling out your business. You don't have a choice. Your dreams have to be way bigger than what you're thinking about, folks, because right now what you're thinking about is what you need. When I quit thinking about what I need, I started getting exactly what I needed and what I deserved. So the 10x concept is, is like, okay, how much, how much would I need? How many people would I need to call on? Who would I need to be in front of? What would I need to do so that I never have to worry about money? Or when I'm worrying about money, I'm worrying about big money problems rather than little money problems. How many of you like to have some big money problems? See, I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana, okay? Single mother, my dad died when I was 10 years old. My mom was clipping coupons. She had a drawer in the house. How many of you grew up with a parent that was clipping coupons? How many of you grew up in a household where, where you heard this? Help me, help me here if, if you know the answer to this. A penny saved is? Yeah, money doesn't grow on? Um, save for a? Yeah, that's all dumb. How about this one? How about this one? Money won't make you? And the person that told you that never had any money. Okay, because money won't make you happy. The two things, happiness and money, should not be in the same conversation. They have nothing to do with one another. When I'm going to get money, when I'm trying to get money, I am not trying to get happy. I'm not looking for happy when I'm going for money. I'm looking for money. So when people tell you, why do you work so hard? Because I'm trying to get some money, punk. <laughs> Man, why do you keep calling these people? Because I'm trying to get what I deserve. Man, why, why do you take off weekends? Because weekends do not make you stronger. They make you weaker. 
Okay, why can I not find a real estate agent on a Sunday? Uh, I'm off this weekend. God damn, I'm buying a $25 million house and I'm working. And you're not. This is insanity. And, and some of you have been watching me on YouTube and you're like, man, this guy's hard on real estate agents, okay? Let's just put it out on the table. I have said before, I think most real estate agents should not have a license, have not earned a damn license, okay? Because, because they, they, they bring, they bring the, 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 the space down, okay? Most should not be called professional real estate agents. Man, you don't even know what the property next door is, okay? I've had agents, I've, I've, I've never... I've never, as a licensed agent, worked it, okay? I bought almost $3 billion worth of real estate. So I've met a handful of real estate agents in my lifetime. I know the difference between great ones and the rest. And that's all there is, by the way, folks. There's the great ones and everybody else. There's no average and there's no bad. There's the great ones and everybody else. You guys got to decide this weekend where do you want to be. Because I got on this team, I got on this team, and I've worked for many of the other companies at one time or another. They asked me to do this or that for them. This is the only company in the real estate space that I was willing to put my name on because of that man right there. Okay? That's right. Stand up and give him a hand. Come on. Come on. Glenn Sanford. Blow him up. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I put my name on nothing. 35 years I've been in business. I've had a lot of people say, hey, would you do this? Would you do that? Could we do this? Could we do that? And I'm like, when, when Glenn said, hey, Grant, what I want to do, what I'm doing, what we're in the process of doing right now is we, the, the agent can make a commission. I think that's how it works, right? I'm like, dude, anybody can get that. Okay. My question is, why do more real estate agents not have any equity? He's like, yeah, we got the equity piece handled. I'm like, dang, I'm in. Okay, what else you got? They can build a team. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in so big. Just send me the paperwork, Glenn. What do I got to do? What do you want me to do? This is a Saturday afternoon. We're on the phone after this clubhouse thing. He's like, okay, Grant, we could do this. We could do that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, whatever, man. Send it to me. We'll do it. It was literally, that's how the whole deal got put together. Then I get up the phone. I'm like, I'm so excited about this guy, Glenn Sanford. He's completely opposite of me. <laughs> He's intelligent. And I'm just brute force, okay? He mind maps. I spend no time there. <laughs> he, he's like, meet me on the mind map. I'm like, dude, I looked at that thing. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Fucking circles and bubbles and shit everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, bro. Is this how you think? <laughs> you need to have a drink. <laughs> Settle down, man. And me, me, we, we literally, Glenn will tell you this. We literally don't even have a deal, and I'm on social media saying, EXP. 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 True story right now. EXP. Everybody. EXP. EXP. So I was going freaking nuts, man. I was going nuts. And then I get off the phone, and I tell my wife, I said, hey, baby, baby, you got, why don't you, I can't. Why don't you sign up? Why don't you become a real estate agent? Now, now, folks, you need to understand how big this opportunity. I think this opportunity is for you and my family. I have, I have a couple of businesses this year. We'll do $150 million. My real estate, we have $2.5 billion worth of real estate that we own that produces cash flow. Almost 10,000 units that, that 2200 bucks a month. Do the math on that. Things are very good at our place. And I'm like, why don't you become a real estate agent? <laughs> okay, average real estate agent makes what, 25,000 bucks a year or something? 25,000 a year, okay, right? Something like that? It's sad. It's sad. And I want to talk to you about the finances right now, okay? Somebody said about not chasing squirrels. I think she was talking about chasing other opportunities. Is that right? Okay, but also, you guys need to think about not chasing squirrels that don't get your opportunity here because they're squirrels, they're gathering nuts. Like, oh, I can't, I can't, I don't want to put signs up. I'm like, dude, move on. You need people. I need people in my life that are heavily financially motivated. I hear everybody talking about their wives and their kids and, and oh, my God, life is to be lived. You cannot live on this planet without money, folks. Okay? Nowhere can you go and buy something, the yacht, 
the experience, the weekend to come down here. Did they charge you guys for your hotel room? Or did they take a happy check? <laughs> you, 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 you can, I'd like the suite. I'd like the presidential suite for the family. Okay, sir, that will be $12,000 a night. Baby, do we have any happy left? <laughs> they don't even take that in Mexico. They take, what do they take down here? They take American dollars on a, probably won't even take cash today. If you brought them a bag of cash, they'd be like, we'd rather have the American Express. Right or wrong? So you, I would look for people today that are financially motivated, that want to make more money, and that understand that financial illiteracy is what's hanging people up from their dreams. You got people, hey, what do you want to do? Well, I want my time off. What are you going to do with time off? You ain't got any money. <laughs> the hell, man. You want to you know the cause of depression? Too much time and too little money. Give me a job. Give me a mission. Give me something to do. Give me possibility. Give me a payoff. Because I'm going to tell you something. You guys say you're not motivated by money. But I'll promise you this. When there's a big enough stack, a big enough reward, something significant enough to change your life significantly, like to go from here to another place, the gentleman that came here from another country, what's that guy's name? Where's he at? Oh, my God, man. That guy touched my heart, right? Where's he at? Where you at, dude? But those stories are in America, too, where people in America are living in lower, lower class or middle class families, and they make a launch out. I made a launch out. I was in a middle class family, raised by a single mother. We had a roof over our head, three meals a day. Uh, I had all the love I could do, but God, we had no money. And when you don't have money, you have fear. When you don't have the right vehicle, when you're in a vehicle, you're, you're working real estate, and the most you can make is 3%, and they're going to chop you. You know they're going to chop you. You know the seller's going to cut you up. 3%? You got me $2 million over asking, and you want 3 6%, and I got to split it with my wife? <laughs> right? How many of you get chopped up? You're getting chopped up because you're not professional enough yet. When they're still asking for your fees, they are saying, hey, you are still not the player that I that deserves a full fee. So you've got to change your game now, man, particularly with inventory problems that you have right now. You're going to continue to have this inventory problem, folks. This is not going away. Housing prices over the next decade will not go down. They will go up. They will continue to go up. You're looking in a rearview mirror thinking about what, oh, shit, I should have bought everything. Because you should have, by the way. But you didn't, because you didn't sell enough to have enough to buy enough. Right? And you were sitting in the market. You were sitting in the market. How many times have you said, this is a good deal? How many of you in the room have said that before? This is a good deal. Why don't you buy it? Oh, because you can't. Because you didn't. See, you didn't do enough to put yourself and your family in a situation where you could. And that's what happened to me in 2010. I had not done enough. I had three successful businesses. All three of them got cut off because of, of this mortgage thing that some of you in the room were involved in. Okay, I don't blame you. Squeeze the whole world. The whole world had this big contraction, and everybody got hurt from it, okay? And at that moment, you found out how strong your business was. You, you had the same experience last year during COVID. How strong were you? Okay. EXP will probably be the big beneficiary of COVID. Because people will be like, fuck, I don't need an office. That's stupid. Why do I need an office? Okay. Uh, one of my first notes today was about the office. I, I'm going to tell you, out of the $3 billion worth of real estate that I bought, I have never, ever closed a real estate deal in somebody's office. Hey, can you come sign? Can you come sign at our office? No, I cannot come sign at your office. Okay, this was before DocuSign, okay? Do you have a fax machine? Okay, why would I come visit you and the title company and the escrow people, sit around with a bunch of people that can't buy what I just bought? It's stupid. Why am I going to do that, okay? You want to come to my house? Nah, I don't think so. You know, you stay there, I'll stay here, let's do a deal. You know why? I got to pay for this shit. So the best thing for me to do is get back on the phone and start paying for stuff. I need to be on the phone, folks. You need massive, massive levels of activity going into 2021. 
Because the other brokers, remember, there's great brokers and there's everybody else. There's great agents and everybody else. you got to decide to be in this top 5%. And do not even look at anything the other 95% of the people do. I know this is a cruel, hard message, but they're not paying me. If they were paying me, I could give you a soft, loving message. <laughs> okay? I don't care if you guys like me or not. What I care about is whether you like, whether you, like you or not more at the end of this year than you did at the beginning of the year. Because that's the target, man. I gotta love myself. I gotta like me, okay? I'm not trying to produce for the rest of the world. I'm trying to produce for me. I'm not even trying to produce for my kids and my wife. Yeah, they're beneficiaries. But look, if I can please me, if I can hit my, if I could shock myself, okay, would, would I be able to take care of my wife and kids? My kids, man, they're lucky to be along for the ride. Little freeloaders. Okay, we don't check with them when we're deciding to do something. We're going to Cabo. I don't, I don't want to go to Cabo. All right. We still going. I'm with you. How do we get from no to yes? Maybe you're going. Okay? And we're going to go there. And they're going to get on the plane and we're going to go. Like you, somebody at your, company, at, your, at your company, your household needs to make a decision. Hey, what's the best thing for the household? Elena and I have it chopped up. Okay? There's certain things she makes decisions on, certain things I make decisions on. We don't second guess people's decisions. Until that person's repeatedly making mistakes in that area, hey, go ahead and do it. If you get a 95, you get to keep that job. Okay? As long as I got a 95, remember, I talked her into going out with me. You understand? I close the deal. Some of you can't close the deal because you don't prospect. And some of you do close the deal because you don't prospect. <laughs> you know? You understand? Some of the business you get's no good. How many agree with that? Some of the stuff you get's no good because you'd rather take that deal than prospect another hundred deals. Because if you prospected enough at the top of your funnel, and this is why I love social media so much, at the top of the funnel, if you can get the top of that funnel wide enough, you do not have to put up with people you resent. You resent your customers. How many of you had the experience of resenting a customer before? I hate these people. Be honest. Be honest. Okay? Don't be an average agent and a liar. Okay? I hate these people. Fucking goddamn it. I hate open houses. I hate them. Fucking hate them. Goddamn people. People, people with no money, low credit scores, first time buyers. I hate them. Goddamn it. I hate them. Well, if you hate them so much, why don't you go get some people that bought 50 houses? Because you're lazy. You wanted to take that little thing right there. Somebody allowed you to be lazy, by the way. Because lazy is not a normal condition. How many, how many parents here say 10x? You show me a lazy kid, and I'll show you a kid that's sick. You show me a kid that's lazy, and I'll show you a kid that's sick. Everybody agree with that? A five-year-old, three-year-old, two-year-old, they're not lazy. If they're up, <sighs> Don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that. Okay? If they're not touching stuff, what's wrong with him? Something's wrong. Let's get him to the doctor. Right? See, what happened to you? You should be touching everything. Like, I remember, man, I'm growing up. My, my, my single mom's trying to handle me. She's like, she's like, don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that. Everywhere we went. And finally, she's like, we ain't ever going any place. Okay? And then I'm 14 or 15. She's like, don't touch yourself. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. Yeah, got nothing. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> you guys, it's all right. It's all right, guys. We're in Cabo. <laughs> Have fun, man. Damn. Oh, I cannot believe he said that. <laughs> look, 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 look. When you learn, when you learn to start saying whatever the hell you want, it's because your funnel's big enough. Okay? See, what you guys do is y'all y'all do this. Shit, better not say that. Oh, oh, better not ask him how much money he's got. Because your funnel's not big enough. There's no way I'm going to work with somebody without knowing how much money they got. Dude, how liquid are you right now? Oh, I can't believe you asked me that. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> okay, I'll get you used to it here in a second. How much money do you have? I'm never going to tell you that. Dude, how am I going to find the right, the right place for you? Okay? Look, the IRS knows how much money you have. I just met you. Okay. You hate the IRS or you like them? I hate them. On a scale between hating the IRS and me, where am I at? 
You're about halfway. Good. How much freaking money do you have? Okay. Have you ever bought a house before? How much money do you make on your job? How much money do you have to put down? Who else is going to make a decision on this? I'm the only decision maker in our household. The only one. Okay, good. That's good. How many houses have you bought? Three. Good. Who else was involved on each of those three purchases? My mother, my aunt, and my wife. <laughs> now you know what? He's not the only decision maker. Just because they have, he could be a billionaire. I know billionaires that will not make decisions on their own. So you guys got to know, okay? When, when somebody says they're going to be there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, is there any reason you could not be here at 2 o'clock? tomorrow. Short of nuclear devastation and another major outbreak of the COVID-19. <laughs> Is there any reason at all in the world, short of typhoons and nuclear, that you could not be here today? Uh, yeah, you know, actually, uh, I have a dentist appointment at two. How many of you had an appointment not no-show you before? How many have said they would, be, they would be somewhere or do something or give you something and then they backed out of it? It's not because they, they didn't back out because, because they're liars. They backed out because you let them back out. You didn't shut the door down. You're not acting like a professional. Dov said, I'll be there, I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Good. Would there be any reason you change your mind? No, man. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Good. You want me to pick you up? Because if you guys started picking people up, they would not no-show you. I don't need a no-show. I need confidence. I need confidence. I need momentum. And the problem with the idea that you're going to make twenty-five dollars or $50,000 or $75,000 a year, the problem with that is you're never going to get momentum. You're going to get what? What, what does it take to make twenty-five dollars or $30,000 or $50,000 a year? One house a month? One house every two months? If you only do one house every two months, this is a hard, cold truth, folks, okay? EXP. What does EXP even stand for, Glenn? Exponential. Y'all know what that means? It means big multiplying growth. It doesn't mean adding and subtracting. This is what's wrong with the middle class in America. They add and subtract. Okay, I'm going to go from one to two to three to four to five to six. And then we're going to take little baby steps along the way. Okay? And then you're going to be 90 years old and wonder why you can't take any steps. Okay? The players, what the players do is they say, okay, I did this. Now I'm going to go ten times that. I'm looking for big jumps in my team. Elena, how many people have you signed up in the first 30 days? She's got 32 already, okay? And I'm disappointed. I've got to tell you, I'm disappointed with my own, my own promotional skills. I'm like, well, how can you only have 32, dude? Look, I'm telling people, join her. Get on a team. Get on a team. EXP, EXP, EXP. I use every distribution I can. Join, okay? You guys work somewhere? Join with her. I'm just promoting her. And when I'm not promoting her, I'm promoting you guys. So use me, okay? I have about 10 million people, social maniacs. These people will do anything I tell them to do. I literally tell them, come to Cabo. Come to Cabo. Let's jump off a yacht. So they'll be like flying down here. Let's go. <laughs> okay? And, and, and so anything I can do, anything my wife can do to, grow, to help you grow, okay? I'm not on your team. I don't think we're on your team. But let me tell you, if you're a human being on planet Earth, we're on your team. Because this is what I know. This is what I know. I'm not successful. I'm not successful until all the people around me are successful. I want to walk in rooms where everybody's winning, man. Everybody's thinking big. I don't want to be around any handicapped, damaged, mentally damaged people. I don't mean, I, I know that I know those people do, have, people do have those issues, but I'm talking about the healthy people that have the mental limitations that my mother had from clipping coupons because my mother did not know how to go get business. She didn't know how to get business. All she knew was how to hold on to what we had. She was saving money. She was in conservation mode. When I'm conserving money, okay, trying to pay my house off. How many, how many of you have been trained by Dave Ramsey? Okay, well, good. He'll get you out of debt, but he won't get you rich. I'm just telling you, man. You're just, I got to pay my debt off. I got to pay all my debt off. I got to pay my debt off. I got to get my IRA account. I got to get my 401k. I got to save some money. I run my ass. I work my ass. Oh, 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 get a listing. Got a little money. Run over to Wells Fargo. Oh, drop the money off at Wells Fargo. I get the money. I get the money. I drop the money off at Wells Fargo. I go hustle some more listings, okay? I want you to change the lights over here, okay? So, so I, I hustle a little more, get a little, get a little money. I run over here back to Wells Fargo. Fuck, here's Wells. You know what? Wells Fargo calls me up. Hey, all these people at EXP getting listings. 
making some money. They take the money, they bring it to the bank. Mr. Cardone, could we lend you their money? This is what happens. Y'all know that's what happens, right? You guys, you guys are so committed to Wells Fargo and to 401k and to Merrill Lynch and to Charles Schwab. But what about you and your family? What about your business? Three things you should be investing in in 2021. Number one, these things will never let you down, folks. Number one, you should be investing in yourself. Some of you got more money in Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, than you do in yourself. Your self-improvement is a no-brainer, okay? There's no money, no, nothing, nothing that I, no book I've ever read that somebody can take away from me. It's impossible. Give me one piece of data that's good for me. Give me one experience that's positive for me. No one can steal it. You can't tax it, and it cannot be depreciated. See, 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 like I got no money on me right now. How many of you saw Undercover Billionaire? Yeah, you should, you should take a look at those of you who didn't see it. You don't need money to make money. Okay? You need people. As long as, you, as long as you're willing to extrovert yourself into the community and meet people. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Who are you? I'm a guy. Like, you, you don't even know how to do it right. You just need to be like, hey, what's up? Everybody try this. What's up? No, no. What's up? Yeah. See? People can be like, what's wrong with him? You should practice that this weekend. Every time you go to the restroom or go to the bar, hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 how you doing? Who? Hey. <laughs> What's up? You know, just say hi to people. Just get used to extroverting yourself onto people because people that you don't know have everything that you want. And it's going to make you feel better about you. I invest, number one, in me. Number two, I invest. I will never give the bank money until I invest in my business. I'm never going to save money at Wells Fargo. Cash is trash, folks. How many were taught you were brought up cash is king? It's garbage. It's pieces of paper. If you saw the stock, if you saw the dollar as a stock in the last 55 years, it's going down like this. The graph is straight down almost a 90% depreciation value. You would never invest in that stock. But what do you guys do? Work your ass off, trade time for money, take the money, and save it so it gets depreciated. What does the bank do as soon as you give it to them? They call me up. Hey, Mr. Cardone, can we lend you some of these people's money? They're work hardworking people. They were working their asses off on the weekends, trading time for money, and they came and gave us the money. It's, it's amazing these people do this over and over again. I'm like, please send it over. Okay, the third thing I would invest in, once you and your business are doing well, by the way, you'll know, it's not even a question. If you're calling me up like, when should I start investing, Grant? If you're still asking that question, you don't have enough money. It will be so obvious to you. Your business is on banging, it's banging, 12 cylinders just banging, man. Listings coming in, sales being made, people talking about you. Your freaking numbers are going like this. Everything's like straight up and vertical. Then you should invest in something where you cannot lose your money. Something that can multiply, something that can get you tax write-offs. By the way, it's something that you got to sell every day. Real estate. Probably the best investment on this planet. And you guys are selling it. Okay, and there's no shortages of inventory of real estate. I know you guys think there's a shortage. But if the house is still there, and it's got an address, and there's a person living there, if you can get them from no, I'm not selling, to maybe, you just freed up some inventory. Would you, would you agree with that? You just got to learn the game now, okay? But you got to be committed first, folks. I want to help you. My wife wants to help you. I know Glenn's committed to your help. Brent put this thing on for you. Big commitment. Big, big, big hand for Brent for putting this on. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. And look, anything, anything, anything. Anything I can do, my wife can do to help you if you ever run into me on YouTube or Instagram or uh, we, I actually use those mechanisms for one reason, okay, to, to literally build a funnel. So if you're ever on Clubhouse and you see me, come up, man. I'll, I'll invite you into the room. I'll flow you a bunch of attention. Look, remember, if nobody knows you, if they don't know you, they can't flow you. Okay, it doesn't matter who you know, it matters who knows you. 
I remember when I was growing up, my, fa my father said, your name matters, your name matters, your name matters. But what he didn't know is to, to, to get known today, you got to get known. If they don't know you, best product and best agent will not win the game. Best known will always win the game. In your marketplace, the best known wins the game, okay? Thank you for having me here. God bless you guys. Have a great time while you're in Cabo. And I hope I didn't offend anybody. If I did, oh well, we're in Cabo. Dude, that was awesome. Thank you. Very good. All right, Grant Cardone. Woo! Fire. Loved it.